Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the year six pass marks in a little bit more detail. This is in response to having quite a few questions about what the pass marks are for the next set of tests in 2025. I am going to share what I think the pass marks are going to be in this video at the end of the video. So please stay tuned to find out what those could be. But I'm going to explain a little bit more detail as to how they come about and how we get to those pass marks. So pass marks big question mark around these what are they for the 2025 sats tests i've had lots of comments um, and questions about this but first before we talk about pass marks we need to talk about something called scale scores because the first thing to tell you is that the pass marks each year for the year six sats can be different and i'll tell you why um, this is taken from the direct.gov website, um, the standards and testing agency who are responsible for creating all of the year six SATs tests over the years. And it goes into detail around how they get the pass marks. And they talk about something called a scaled score. OK, it says tests are developed to the same specification each year. However, because the questions must be different, the difficulty of the test may vary slightly each year. This means we need to convert the total number of marks a pupil gets in the test, which is their raw score, into a scale score to ensure we can make accurate comparisons of pupils over time. So something to take from that first thing is that the questions are going to be different and therefore the difficulty of the test may vary slightly. And this is true. Tests do get more difficult each year. Sometimes you have an easier test. Sometimes you have a more difficult test, particularly in the reading papers. So it says pupils scoring at least 100 scale score will have met the expected standard on the test. However, given that the difficulty of the test may vary each year, the number of raw score marks needed to achieve a scale score of 100 may also change. For example, if the overall difficulty of a test decreases, so that means gets easier, compared with the previous year, the raw score required to meet the expected standard will increase. So if the test is easier, the pass mark will go up. That's what it's basically saying. Similarly, if the test is more difficult, the raw score required to meet the expected standard will decrease. And what that is saying is, if it's a more difficult test, then you'll need less marks to be able to meet the pass mark. So how do they get to these raw scores? And this is the kind of bit that I was looking for online. It says in 2016, panels of teachers set the raw score required to meet the expected standard. So when they introduced these new tests, a panel of teachers came up with what the raw score should be. However, since then, we have used data from trialing to maintain that standard for tests from 2017 onwards. So essentially what they're saying is they trial papers in schools, see how the children do. And then based on how the children do av on an average, they set a, a pass mark for those papers, which is interesting because my school has recently been asked to take part in one of these trials where somebody from the standards and teaching agency comes into school, tests the children on a on a SATS paper, which is not the real one. Um, and then the children do it and then they just leave. They don't tell you how they've done, but they, they get the children to do it so that they can see what the pass mark should be for that paper and whether it's pitched correctly. All right. So what does this all have to do with pass marks for you and your child? So let's go through each scale score and see what it was last year. So just to be keep in mind, this is last year's. OK, this is 2024, the most recent sats. So to get a scale score of 100, the pass mark last year was 27. So the reading pass mark was 27 last year. Now, the scale score for greater depth, which is what you can achieve to show that you're working above the expected standard, is always 110. So you can see the scale score for greater depth last year in reading was 40. So I'm telling you now, that the pass mark and the greater depth mark is going to be in and around that area. OK, the 27 and 40 mark. What about for grammar and spelling? Well, the scale score, OK, was 100 um, as always. And it was 36 that you needed to do a scale score. Oh, no, sorry, I make a mistake down here. 35 was the, the lowest possible mark that you needed to get a scale score of 100. So 35 was the pass mark for grammar last year. And the greater depth score to get that scale score of 110 was 53. So you needed 35 to pass and 53 marks to get greater depth. Interesting fact for you, um, they do two papers 
in spelling and grammar a spelling and you also do a grammar paper now the grammar paper is out of 50 so technically speaking if you got 36 out of 50 on the grammar and you got zero on your spelling you could still pass it's not the best way about going about it and you should be learning spellings just because it's something you need to know but just to be aware that you could score high in grammar and get absolutely nothing in spelling and still pass because they add those two scores together. Maths, um, I've included quite a large table here because um, they do three papers in maths, which is why there's a lot more numbers. But you can see here the lowest possible score to get that scale score of 100 last year was 56. So last year the pass mark was 56. And for great to depth, it was 94. So you need 94 for greater depth. And bear in mind, that's when you add your arithmetic and the two reasoning papers together. That's the score they need to pass and that's what they would need to get greater depth. So a little few things for you, some interesting facts about how you can pass in maths, some of them quite shocking. Well, the arithmetic's out of 40. So let's say you got all, all 40 out of 40 on your arithmetic. Remember the pass mark? It was 56. So that means that you would only need 16 marks, okay, from these other two papers to pass. Technically speaking, you could have got eight and eight and still passed overall, because that would have made 16 plus your 40 from arithmetic, which is 56. Now, when we prep children for SATs, we always say, let's try and make sure we score high in arithmetic somewhere between 35 and 40. So that means we don't need many on our reasoning papers to pass. Also, it helps when trying to get that greater depth score. So practicing arithmetic is a really good thing you can do to help, particularly between now and the stats you've not got long left to, to get, help you get that pass mark. Okay, here's an interesting table. And this is what I promised you, okay? I promised to tell you what the pass marks would be in 2025. And the thing is, I can promise to give you my best guess of what they would be. I can't tell you them for certain because they haven't been given to teachers yet. And they don't until all the children have sat the tests. And then we get given the scale scores. Um, and the scale scores will tell us what pass mark they would need to get to that scale score of 100. And like I said previously, it changes every year because the difficulty of the test changes because they have to give different questions. It's not the same test every year. But what this table can do is it can help us to see how the tests have changed over time and how you can see what the pass marks have been for the last few years. So we can see in 2017, the pass mark was 57. It went up in, in, in 2018 to 61, telling me that that must have been an easier paper. It went back down in 2019 to 58. It then stayed at 58 in 2022. Um, obviously we had a big gap because of COVID um, and then it went down in 2023 to 56. So that must have been a more difficult paper. And last year, it was the lowest that it's ever been, 54. And I will agree that last year's maths papers were tricky. We had some children not pass who we thought would. Um, but where you want to be aiming for, you're not, you're, look, you want to be aiming for around the 58 mark. I mean, it's only once that it's gone higher than that, okay, in 2018. But that's where you want to be aiming to pass the maths. And then you can see a GD scores underneath. And they've all been around the 95 mark. OK. For reading, um, you've got in 2017, the pass mark was 26. In 2018, it was 28. It then stayed at 28 in 2019. Uh, it went up one in 2022. It went down in 2023. Um, that was a difficult paper. And that's why it's gone down. But also... It was a lot of words for the children to read in that paper, a lot of complaints about how many words the children had to read. If you remember, it was about bats um, in the USA, in Texas, I think. And then it's gone up again in 2024. Last year's reading paper wasn't as difficult. So if, I was, if you were asking me, I would say, look, you were aiming to score around 28, just to be sure, 28 or higher to pass your reading. For grammar, now this is the one that doesn't really change much at all. It's been 36 um 36 there it's been 36 three times it's gone down twice to 35 but not much change and in 2018 it went to 38 so looking at 2018 it seems like all those papers were quite difficult which is why you had the low pass marks so to summarize answering the question about what's the pass mark going to be for 2025 
My honest answer is I can't tell you for certain, but I can give you my best guess. And I would say that in maths, you're aiming for about 58. Reading, you're aiming for about 28 to be sure that you pass. And grammar, you're going to aim for around 36. Um, greater depth, you can see the scores underneath. In maths, I would say you're aiming for about 96 to be sure of greater depth. In reading, you're aiming at about 40, 41 to be sure of greater depth. And in grammar, you're aiming at around 56 to get that greater depth score. Okay, I hope that answers some of your questions. I hope you found that video useful. And like always, I'll see you in the next one. Please like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out making this content. Bye guys, take care.